A new law would require the FAA to investigate UFO sightings. We've got that and a lot more to talk about today, so get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, yeah, Wisconsin Congressman Glenn Grothman, says Mike, uh, Michelangelo, uh, is co-sponsoring a bill that would mandate the FAA investigations of UFOs and ensure people can make those reports without fear of being ridiculed. Here's from News Nation. And now under a new law, airline pilots will now have a new way of reporting strange, unidentifiable objects in the sky. The new bipartisan bill requires the FAA to investigate any UFO sightings. I spoke with Wisconsin Congressman Glenn Grothman about why this new UFO transparency bill is so important. Well, in the past, people could never be sure if there'd be revenge taken at them, if they'd be, quite frankly, referred to as crazy for imagining something like this. So now we're saying not only pilots, but air maintenance people, flight attendants, anybody else, air traffic controllers, can report these phenomena without having people without worrying that revenge is going to be taken on them. And quite frankly, it was a problem in the past because some people who just didn't believe in them thought that it might show that you have a mental problem. But you look at what you have there up on the screen. Is it important that the Department of Defense look into this and see exactly if there's any possible explanation for what's going on here? Yeah, and, and you love it. So that is really encouraging. I mean, I remember just a few years ago when uh, pilots would talk about UFOs. Well, first of all, I mean, they didn't talk about it if they if they you know could help it. Uh, but if they did feel compelled to talk about it and they went and did an interview, they couldn't wear their pilot uniform or any. Uh, they couldn't talk about what airline they were with. Uh, you know, that whole kind of thing. It was it was very much under the radar. Uh, and now to think that the FAA itself will investigate these sightings and take them seriously without any reprisals for the witnesses. That's just great, guys. That is really encouraging. What's not so encouraging is that Mark Werner might not know who David Grush is. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I don't know about this one. Okay. All right. From Matt Laszlo at Ask a Poll. Uh, when he asked uh, 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 Mike Warner, uh, excuse me, Mark Warner, the Senate Intelligence Committee uh, chair, uh, you know, a, a very important position. And, you know, Steve Bissett is placing a lot of trust in, in Mark Warner. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll see if that trust is warranted. Um, but yeah, because uh, Steve spoke very highly of, of Mark Warner's uh, role in all of this uh, to come uh, in, in the interview that I did with Steve. Uh, but when uh, Askable asked, what are your thoughts on a House member trying to hire whistleblower David Grush to help with their ongoing UFO investigation? Warner said, who? <laughs> uh, Matt says, this caught our ear. I have no idea. Senate Intelligence uh, Chair Warner exclusively told Askapole of UFO whistleblower David Grush. Uh, but, okay, it may not be all doom and gloom. Joe Mergia, UFO Joe, has a much more optimistic uh, appraisal of this conversation. Uh, Warner is a member of the Gang of Eight, uh, Joe says, uh, so what he says may give us some insight into where we stand. Read all of this. Uh, in a uh, November 2023 interview, Laszlo mentioned Grush and Warner didn't feign ignorance. In the current interview, he mentioned Grush and the response was, who? Laszlo said Grush again and added the UAP UFO whistleblower. Warner's response, I got, I have no idea. Let's give Senator Warner the benefit of the doubt that he knows who Grush is. And his, I have no idea, was in reference to Laszlo saying that the UAP caucus folks are trying to hire Grush. More important is what Warner said to Laszlo in that November 2023 interview when the NDAA was mentioned. Laszlo asks, remember Schumer had the UAP provision with Gillibrand and Rubio? Warner says, I, I am. Are we uh, on or off the record? <laughs> Laszlo says, always on. We can go off if you want, but that's boring. Uh, indeed, indeed. Warner says, I'm not going to say anything on, and when I go off, I'm not saying anything that much either. <laughs> okay.
Uh, Warner then explained that there is finally a serious effort in serious scientist, Arrow, serious scientist, to investigate UAP and mentions his interest in Project Blue Book as a kid. He also bring, brings up stigma and how, for a long time, it wasn't a career builder to report anomalies, especially for Navy pilots. But then he makes it crystal clear. I see no current efforts to hide the ball or anything. Uh, Joe says, really? I agree there's not some massive widespread cover-up going on. There, there's totally a massive widespread cover-up going on, Joe, but okay. Uh, but in my opinion, Joe says, there is a small group of people working in intel agencies and or private contractors who know about and run the alleged UAP SAPs, the Special Access Programs such as the Crash Retrieval and Reverse Engineering Program. Anyway, he goes on, but uh, there you go. And you can read the full thing. It's kind of a, a longer uh, piece uh, at your leisure. You know, but I totally disagree with Joe that there's not a massive cover-up. There's clearly a massive, massive cover-up. And the control group itself is huge. I mean, Richard Dolan calls it the breakaway civilization. I would even go further say multiple civilizations. Or, you know, at least there seem to be multiple groups doing different things. Uh, there's an international group. There's the individual national groups doing things. And then there's different factions, apparently, within those national groups. Uh, yeah, so, but, you know, really interesting a Warner's response uh, and you know uh, are we on or off the record <laughs> yeah so what does uh, uh, Mark Warner know probably a lot probably a lot uh, will he be an ally of disclosure uh, you know to come uh, I mean based on these responses I'm not that optimistic honestly uh, Steve Bissett is way more optimistic about about Mark Warner than I am uh, but, you know, obviously time will tell. Let me know what you guys think. Meanwhile, is this real? This looks real. Is an elephant drawing? Is this, is this, is this legit, guys? Is this CGI? It doesn't look like CGI. It looks like that elephant is painting a self-portrait or uh, maybe a portrait of one of his buddies. I mean, is this possible? Is this a thing? Can elephants do art? Oh my God, yeah, is this is nuts. Is this real? This can't be real. That's crazy, guys. That's crazy. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. I, I can't do that. Okay. Well, let me know if you think this is real, guys. Putting the finishing touches on there. Putting the tail on there. That's wild. It was wild, guys. Meanwhile, Joey is not my name has some further thoughts about the Arrow report uh, in regards to Michael Herrera. Uh, since Mike Herrera's testimony was not directly addressed in the executive summary or findings in the Arrow report, does that mean it's safe to assume his encounter falls within this explanation? And we'll go through that. Interestingly, Arrow incorrectly uh, quoted Michael as saying he saw an extraterrestrial spacecraft, which they specifically claim interviewees have mistakenly associated with well-known and understood classified programs. Uh, and yeah, the, here is what he's talking about. In many cases, the interviewees named authentic USG classified programs well-known and understood to those appropriately accessed to them and the executive branch, uh, executive and legislative branch. However, the interviewees mistakenly associated these authentic USG programs with alien and ET activity. Arrow has reached the following. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, so could, you know, is that... Is Arrow saying that Mike saw a human flown uh, a craft and that uh, this sort of uh, program is known uh, to certain members of Congress? I mean, that seems to be the implication if if we can, uh, you know, go by Arrow's word, which we cannot go by Arrow's word on any of this. Uh, but if they were trying to tell a truth to tell a lie, which I think they do, uh, then this would be uh, one example of that. And very interesting that they might be revealing, however, in, unintentionally, that members of Congress might know about some of these programs, like, you know, Mark Werner, Senate Intelligence Chair. Would he have access to that information? Well, if anybody would, it would be somebody like Mark Werner, right? 
so yeah, really interesting, really interesting stuff. Of course, it's important to point out that Arrow did lie uh, about, about Michael Herrera's uh, information because Mike never said it was an extraterrestrial craft. Uh, and he also never said they were U.S. Special Forces. Um, he hasn't claimed to know who those guys are. So, yeah, so Arrow did blatantly lie in the report. Meanwhile, was a bison from 40,000 years ago shot by a gun? Okay, that is the claim made by this old news report. First is the skull of a bison which roamed the Siberian tundra 40,000 years ago. He was shot by a bullet. The proof is the whole. Ballistics experts have established that it could only have been pierced by a high-speed projectile and that the beast was alive when killed. A shot fired 40,000 years ago. Now, I mean, who knows, guys? Who knows? But I have talked multiple times uh, about the likelihood of some sort of time travel element in a lot of this. Uh, that unfortunately seems to be a thing. I hate the idea of time travel. I mean, yeah, well, what about causation? You know, A doesn't equal B. I mean, A doesn't cause B. B could cause A. It just makes everything so complicated and problematic and hard to understand and wrap your head around and, you know, create any sort of timeline, you know, or, or general understanding of any of this. Uh, but, you know, it does seem to be a function of this, uh, these, this UFO technology uh, that can, you know, transverse dimensions, uh, et cetera, uh, apparently going outside of the fourth dimension or, or time and uh, seeming to have a, a free range. They can go, if they can go outside of time, they can pop back in anywhere. So could they have popped back in 40,000 years ago with the modern guns and shot a bison? I don't know, guys. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Meanwhile, from an older interview with Leslie Kane, she confirms that Carl Nell is one of David Grush's 40 plus whistleblowers. And remains. Is it surprising to you that none of those 40 people has spoken out? It, it is, it, it actually is, Elizabeth. I mean, it's, some of them have, one of them actually was in our article in the debrief, a, 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 a former army colonel named Carl Nell. I think maybe some of them have spoken out a little bit and we just don't maybe put, put it all together, but it really isn't surprising because of the repercussions that people face. And Dave Grush is an example of that. He talked a little bit of in the hearing yesterday. Okay, so there you go. Carl Nell is uh, one of those whistleblowers. So, uh, you know, what involvement does he have in UFO crash retrievals and reverse engineering? Because that's who David was interviewing uh, largely. Now, we don't know any of them, uh, really, but uh, it is interesting to think that Carl Nell, Carl Nell may have been involved in that because he has spoken out in defense of David Grush uh, in the idea of UFO crash retrievals and reverse engineering. He says that's a thing. How does he know it's a thing? Is he actively involved in that? Uh, you know, there was some speculation that he could actually assume the uh, directorship of Arrow. I don't think that's going to happen based on the recent report in the direction Arrow is going. Um, there would be a, such a huge 180. I just, I don't see that happening, but that would be amazing. And you can see why it would be amazing uh, to get somebody like Carl Nell, who may have participated in these programs, uh, to head uh, the investigation into these programs. But Carl Nell, from my understanding, was involved in foreign materials acquisition uh, and maybe exploitation. Uh, now, the thought was that the foreign materials were, you know, Russian or Chinese or, you know, some, some uh, adversary technology that was being recovered from war zones and the like. Um, but maybe it was something else. Meanwhile, Gary Nolan takes someone pushing UFO disinformation to school. Uh, remember this article from The Guardian, uh, very favorable uh, pro Sean Kirkpatrick, the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick article. Uh, Sean Kirkpatrick has faced threats for his work and a new report concluding no evidence UAPs represented ET tech has sent ufology into a tailspin. Uh, yeah, so there it's a, you can read the full article at your leisure, uh, but it's another, uh, you know, pro, pro SK article. Uh, and Gary Nolan is taking this guy, uh, Danny Lavelle to task 
He said, you know, on March 22nd, Danny said, for all the ufologists sending me abuse, I tried to get testimony or evidence that contradicted Kirkpatrick's claims. Uh, People told me they knew people who sent info to Arrow and were ignored, but they provided no evidence. Uh, Gary Nolan says... Did you try to get evidence supporting Dr. Kirkpatrick's claims? <laughs> uh, Danny says uh, in response, how would I go about that, Gary? See Russell's teapot. This really isn't difficult to understand. I'm not super familiar with Russell's teapot, but here you go from Wikipedia. Russell's teapot is an analogy formulated by the philosopher Bertrand Russell to illustrate that the philosophic uh, burden of proof lies upon a person making empirically unfalsifiable claims as opposed to shifting the burden to dispro- of disproof to others. Russell specifically applied his analogy in the context of religion. Okay, so when Danny says, how would I go about that, Gary? See Russell's teapot. This really isn't difficult to understand. Gary replies, this is not grammar school or uh, year seven philosophy class. Russell's teapot is, as a retort, is an unambiguous non sequitur. Russell's tenet does not apply to me or anything I have said here. It applies to you in your article. You have made claims as to Arrow's refutation of claims and conclusions. Where are the evidence and methods for Arrow's claims? Specifics were provided to Arrow. They admitted that. They claimed to have checked them. Okay, what names, places, contractors, programs, etc. were checked and refuted? In science, even a refutation of a claim requires evidence. See how far you get asking for any of that from Arrow and see if they'll spill any tea your way. In the meantime, put a cozy on that teapot (laughs) to keep it warm for another day. It really is that easy to understand. And it goes on with more back and forth, and I'll let you read that to your leisure. I usually don't cover drama, uh, but uh, Gary Nolan taking a disinformation uh, writer to task, I think that's worth covering. Speaking of disinformation, Annie Jacobson has been getting a lot of press recently. I covered it once briefly, uh, talking about how she's giving the disinformation version of how O'Donnell's account. Uh, And I think that's good to keep in mind. Uh, Here's George Knapp refreshing us. Al changed the story and changed significant parts of the story. Okay, just just so you know who we're talking about, Hal O'Donnell, former director of Area 51 under EGNG, uh, talked about there was a live being uh, at Area 51. And later the men in black came and forced him to change his story. Some of it was, uh, was the same, that he was confirming, and some of it was not. And it became the most sensational part of the book. It's the, that part of the book that got all the media attention. The whole focus was on the last seven pages and not the rest of it was really excellent. Al, Do- Al O'Donnell had told um, Annie that he was, in fact, part of this program, that there had been a recovered flying saucer, crashed in New Mexico, that had gone to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, then came out to Nevada, and that he and a small group of people had been working on it uh, at a site adjacent to Area 51. And I think the story he told her was that they had two uh, living beings from survivors of the the crash that were semi-comatose, I guess, and that had been out there. He told her that they were not aliens, that they were humans, that they'd been subjected to horrible medical experimentation, surgery, maybe genetic engineering, by none other than Dr. Joseph Mengele. Joseph Mengele, the doctor, the concentration camp doctor who, who did all kinds of horrible things to Nazi prisoners, concentration camp folks in World War II. That somehow Mengele had ended up not in South America, which is what history says where he went, but he had gone to, Stalin had taken him into custody after World War II. Stalin puts him to work building these beings, these composite beings to look like aliens. And then Stalin had also captured technology developed by the Germans, the the Horton brothers, this advanced uh, flying machine, that they had built the flying saucer, put these concentration camp teenage kids, survivors, in the pilot seat, flown it across the Atlantic Ocean, and crashed it in New Mexico. Intentionally? Intentionally, so that they could start a panic. They wanted to scare us, thinking aliens were invaded. It's a preposterous idea. It's preposterous on so many levels. I mean, it's almost as crazy as saying that UFOs, aliens from other planets crashed here. Yeah, that's the thing I was thinking, man. It's like, it's like... 
Okay, anyway, there you go. Uh, George saying uh, that Andy Jacobson's information is preposterous, that Hal O'Donnell's changed story is preposterous, which it totally is. And, you know, it it's, uh, bothers me to see Andy Jacobson's information getting a lot of play these days uh, when it's clearly disinformation. Now, maybe she is not intentionally spreading disinformation. Uh, it's clear from George Knapp's information that uh, Hal O'Donnell, a former director of Air Area 51 uh, was saying there were uh, living uh, survivors uh, of a UFO crash and that they were non-humans uh, and that they were at Area 51. And then later, the man in black came to him and forced him to change his story to this disinformation version. So, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to play that clip from George uh, and Jerry laughing about this preposterous uh, version of uh, events uh, as put out there by Annie Jacobson. Again, not her fault. She's just reporting on what she was told, but that version of events was manufactured. Meanwhile, another great UFO sighting from John Bell at Florida Real UFO. That's not it. That's a plane. There it is. Look at that. Okay. That was pretty cool. Uh, that was pretty cool. But let's see it slow down. And fortunately, John slows it down for us. Now, it's all blurry and everything. He's trying to capture a fast-moving object. But check that out. Okay. Look at that. Look at this. It's changing direction. It's changing direction. It makes like multiple changes in direction. Really, really cool. Really cool. Let's see that one more time. Yeah, there you go. Going behind my head. Okay, but there you go. Yeah, multiple changes in direction. Uh, great sighting. Thank you, John. Meanwhile, remember that breakthrough technology uh, talked about by Randall Carlson? Well, apparently there, there has been some progress made on that. So let's talk about that. This is a, a very long uh, video. It's uh, 24 minutes long. Obviously way too long for me to, to play for you. And there's a uh, music playing over a lot of it. Uh, but fortunately, David Haith has given us a breakdown. Check this out. Dramatic breakthroughs are being claimed for a discovery that was announced on a Rogan, Joe Rogan pod podcast by Randall Carlson, but Joe pulled the show at the last moment. The thunderstorm generator invented by Malcolm Bindle when fitted to a normal combustion engine stops all carbon emissions and instead emits pure oxygen. It also improve, improves fuel engine saving by around 50%. Climate change implications are enormous for turning every car from a polluter into a cleanup device. Now, in this latest announcement, based on research to discover how the TG actually works, it is being claimed that technical analysis suggests the machine is actually transmuting elements. What? Uh, and the blow for world archaeology and paleontology is that it casts serious doubt on the reliability of carbon dating which is said in this video uh, have to have unimaginable implications. That is just crazy, guys. Crazy information uh, that this technology works and the implications of the carbon dating thing. I mean, this could be a game changer, guys. This is huge. Uh, you know, I, I've talked before about the, 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 the beings telling various, various people that they're expecting an apocalypse and that they're preparing for the apocalypse, possibly with hybrids or even Bigfoot. That's one of the narratives about Bigfoot anyway, uh, that apparently Bigfoot Bigfoot himself has put out there. Uh, so, uh, you know, who knows about all that, but that is definitely a narrative that the beings are telling people. Uh, you prepare for the apocalypse because you're screwing up the planet and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to, we have some safeguards in place uh, after you all, you know, kill most of, most of yourselves. So, uh, but a few of you will survive and we'll, we'll, we'll prepare the, the next world or something like that. So uh, that's, that's one of the thoughts that the beings are implanting in our public consciousness, but not so fast guys, because this new new technology could reverse all of that. We may not have any need for those drastic measures. So uh, just stay cool, guys. Stay cool. 
All right, let me know what you think about that and everything else covered today in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media, Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in an even bigger way, consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt in the merch store below or by becoming a channel member. See the first link in the description below. Uh, meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.